What did they do with their previous one? Let's actually see this. It was just a hole. <laughs> it was just a hole before. So in this video, we're going to be taking a look at the latest R9M light module from FR Sky. Now this is a long range 900 megahertz system or 800 something megahertz system for EU. And what I wanted to see today is if there is an actual difference on the insides between the light version and the pro light or light pro version here. And we're also going to cover these two receivers, which are also brand new. They're called the MM and the mini. So they both look exactly identical, but they do have slight differences. Now, I don't know all their differences just yet, and I'm currently dissecting the access protocol or the latest firmware from FRSky to understand how everything is running. So I could come in later and make a very detailed video of all the features and all of the possible bugs if I do find any and just about everything. So right now we're just gonna cover just a couple things about these receiver, not so much into detail because honestly, I still don't know much about this access software. It's still pretty fresh and I still haven't had enough time to play around with. But today we're gonna be taking a look at the modules real quick. So this is the R9M Lite Pro and this is the R9M Lite. Now these modules are made for the light series of the FR Sky transmitters. For example, here we have an iRange. This is a multi-protocol module. That's for the light series, as you can tell, the mounting solution. Here's the URUAV, which we're gonna be taking a look at in a later video. I have been testing it and it's been really great. This is a multi-protocol module. We'll get into that in a later video. So if you did purchase the R9M Lite, what you would notice, this is actually aluminum. This is CNC'd aluminum to act as a heatsink for the one watt power output, which is pretty insane here. This one is just all plastic. Now I did take these guys apart so we can take a look at the internals. I was really hoping that there's going to be change on the inside. So let's actually see if there is any change. All right, so let's start with the R9M Lite. So once we open the R9M Lite, what we see is we have this little connector going to the main board. And uh, this is routed to the pins right here, the female pin headers that'll connect to your transmitter. Now let's slowly take this apart. Let's see, we might need some tools here. Be careful when doing this. If you don't need to do this, don't even try it. So here's the main board for the R9M Lite. So what we can see is we see that the antenna here is not soldered on directly and it's using some sort of IPEX port and they're using that yellow glue that's become well known on the FR Sky products. And we see there is no shielding or anything of that nature. The back of the PCB is pretty basic and uh, basically everything is being run up here. Now let's take this one apart and see what we have. We also have the same type of connector because obviously they have the same type of connection here. And let's see how we can pop this open. There we go. So here we see that here's the CNC aluminum and it's sticking out portraying here because we do have some thermal adhesive here in order for it to transfer heat to this to cool the overall board down. Now it is a completely different board on the inside now. Um, but you see these little lines. Shielding is supposed to be there. I don't know why they'd never add the shielding. They don't even do the shielding on their multi-protocol modules, which are the Vantex. So I don't know why they always skip out on the shielding here. Maybe there's a reason for it, or maybe it's just to reduce cost. So one thing I immediately like on this board is that the antenna here is actually soldered into place, or the SMA port is soldered into place, unlike the R9M Lite. And it seems to be well thought through here. So the way that they're dissipating the heat here, as you can tell, there is actually nothing below this um, thermal adhesive here. And what it is, is just an exposed copper from the whole board. And uh, what they're doing is, I guess, you know, they're trying to cool it down with the fat heat sink here, and that should cool down the whole board. But I think it would have been a little bit better to be on top of the microcontroller unit, but it could have also been a bit difficult because this side is plastic here, the back side is plastic, and this is just full blown al aluminium, like really nice thick aluminium here, which is really cool. And you can see that the quality, you know, uh, you know FR Sky has questionable quality sometimes, in my opinion. They just used hot glue to hold that into place or silicone glue or something. That's just, you know, this little indicator here. What did they do with their previous one? Let's actually see this. It was just a hole. <laughs> it was just a hole before. Now, some of the features that the new one has is obviously we have up to one watt, but they have this something called OTA, which means over the air. And we'll talk a little bit more about that with the receivers also. So what the OTA will allow you to do is basically do what you can do already on the Crossfire, which is update the receiver wirelessly without S port, just start from the direct binding connection, which is pretty nice to have. So this whole new ATA function is pretty cool, but I rarely ever update any of my receivers here. And um, I don't know if you can also just basically flash one of the older R9s and also have it just update. But then again, this is also running the access protocol, which has a lot more features. 
and um, I still need a bit of time to dissect these features, test these features before I really come here and make a video. Don't want to go too far before I actually test it, understand it, and uh, so I don't give false information. So the R9M Lite Pro has been beefed up slightly, and we can see that from the internals here. So now we also have these two new receivers. We have the MM and the Mini. And uh, this is the MM and this is the Mini, and hopefully I got this right, but it doesn't matter because if you have the packaging, just double check it. So there is differences now, but when you take a look at them, you won't know which is which, and I might actually just forget which one's which later on. So these two are basically identical in every single way, but the PCB traces might be slightly different, or just the firmware is different here. Because if we take, they both have exactly the same features, but the only difference that I currently see here is if we take a look at the pinouts, everything is basically the same. Here we can access PWM channels one, two, three, and four, which is really nice, one, two, and three, and four. If you needed that for like a gimbal setup or something, or some servos, you can have it just output direct uh, PWM for you. So the only difference that I currently see between these two is if we take a look at the manual here, we see that the MM, which is on the right, the MM has a the, an inverted S port down here. So if this is uninverted, then this would be an inverted S port, which you could use. However, the mini, what it has is an S bus in port. So you can basically connect a bunch of minis together. You know, you could put one receiver on the right wing, one receiver on the left wing, you know, or the same thing with your quadcopter, one below the quadcopter, one above. You can, you know, chain a bunch of them together here and actually bind them together, which, which is actually really nice. I really like that. I want to try that one day, but I don't think there's a need for it. Unless I do some crazy bando testing, like, I don't know, maybe I'll try that out. Put a couple of receivers on one quadcopter. So that's currently the only thing that I really see the difference between them because they both have everything um, just basically identical. So these will work with both the R9M Lite and the R9M Lite Pro with access. So that's really nice. So these are backwards compatible with the older R9M Lights. And uh, what we also see is that they take anywhere between 3.5 volts to 10 volts. So that's really nice that it's very um, flexible in the, in the input voltage that it takes. They both will output RSSI on S bus, and um, you can update both via S port through the flight controller, or you can even update them over the air. So that's what the OTA stands for, over the air here for these two receivers. And I'll have these linked down below. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have much more information on these just yet. So I'm planning on doing a very detailed setup guide and testing guide before I come here and give you any solid information because my information on the new protocol is still very uh, minimal. I still haven't tried any of these new features yet and um, which I'll be trying out in the upcoming days and come back and report for you guys and see if there's anything really interesting. And well, I'll have a link to everything here linked down below. We do notice that the R9M Lite Pro is much more refined in terms of the hardware, in terms of the PCB layout. Also, the aluminum heatsink here is a really great addition, especially if you're gonna be broadcasting at one watt. So overall, this looks like a proper package to have if you're gonna be doing long range, especially with these little thin ones. Um, I probably feel more comfortable with this one if right now they're not buggy. So if they're working perfect, then I'd personally probably end up recommending picking up the one with the heatsink because it keeps the overall components cooler, you get longer lifespan, and you can output at a higher output power for much longer because uh, you know you, you reduce the chance of thermal throttling and what that means is if it gets too hot it'll start reducing your output power so if it gets too toasty all of a sudden and you're like 3 10 20 kilometers away and it dropped down from 1 watt to 500 milliwatts then you're going to fail safe Hopefully you'd have your failsafe set into place correctly though. Now everything here is linked down below from the R9M Lite Pro to the new MMOTA and the Lite OTA, which means over the air functionality. And you can do some other crazy cool stuff with it, which we'll get into in a later video. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace out guys.